Hi, my name's Jonathan Rockhind. I work at the Science History Institute in Philadelphia, which is an independent nonprofit academic institute. And I work on our digital collections, uh, digitization program and app, which is what I'm gonna talk about. So we have a Rails app that handles ingest, editing, storing, and access and discovery to our digital collections, metadata and assets. Um, it's a Rails app. It does not use Hyrax or Sambera. It does use Blacklight for search. It stores metadata in a Postgres database uh, as JSON. And the rest of the app uses fairly standard Rails techniques to, uh, it also makes it searchable in Solar and Blacklight. And the app does use a toolkit that we built locally called Kithe, K-I-T-H-E, for storing complex metadata in JSON and Postgres and integrating with Blacklight a little bit and things like that. So if we look at the search results page, we can see this is recognizable as a Blacklight search result probably. We have done some stylistic customization, mostly using CSS and a little bit of other customization to some search features. But the thing on this page, I think, is the way we've customized what a result looks like in a pretty major way. And behind the scenes, one thing we're doing is this template for the custom result is actually using the our active record model, our database object from Postgres database, instead of just the solar result. So we have something that hooks in the black light and after solar response identifies what objects are in the search results, we then fetch them from the database in an efficient way, avoiding n plus one queries. And that's part of the Kite toolkit I mentioned has a hook in the black light to make it really easy. To do. And that we found makes it really easier just to make um, sophisticated customizations to what the search result looks like without having to store all these things in solar that we just want for display. We can really use solar just for identifying the results of the searches, which is what it really excels at. If we click on an item, we see that our item detail page is also just purely just plain Rails. This is not a blacklight page at all. It just uses normal Rails techniques to uh, you know, have a controller and a view that fetches our models and renders them. And that made it easier to have this really pretty sophisticated page. That in this case, this is sort of our standard work detail page for our typical really image heavy, image focused work as most of what's in our collection. But we have some other stuff in our collections. We have a bunch of locally created oral histories that in some cases like this have a uh, playable sound file and textual transcript. And we created a different variant page for different kinds of work. And this is all just, none of this has to do with black light. It's all just kind of standard rails. In this case, you can see we sort of experimented with a fixed nav bar here for, for our different tabs and go up there and see. Uh, without getting into details of this, just showing that it's, it's a little bit experimental, but I think it's working well that we could user test it more. And here's another variant for a oral history that the audio files and transcript files require a request for and workflow them just for internal business reasons. And we can just easily have a different variant for what detail page for that looks like. Um, here's, oh, this is not what I meant to show you, but that's fine. It's just showing you a little bit early. Um, the metadata, metadata page that lets us um, handle the structured, complex, suitable metadata fields that Kite, Kite tool gift gives us some tools for making forms with those repeatable, um, complex metadata. There's the custom date field that has these different parts. Yeah, the Kite tool gift makes this just much easier to do in a sort of way that integrates really well with standard Rails forms and standard Rails validation. We can see this uses standard Rails techniques to show our um, validation errors before we save it. That's the Kite tool again, it makes it easier to do. Uh, something we actually wanted. And Kite also gives us some patterns for traject-based solar indexing for, in this case, our work. You can see uses the traject configuration language. Um, in a way, Traject gives us some patterns for making it automatically re-index to Solar when we save in our Rails app, which is nice. Um, 
So yeah, this ended up, a lot of this presentation ended up being about Kite, because I think that's one of the more interesting parts about our app, especially when talking to other developers, that some of y'all are. And we did write Kite, you know, for ourselves, but we tried to write it in a generic way that could be shared with it doesn't give you a, it's available as a gem, it doesn't give you an app, it just gives you some tools for building an app that, that makes it easier to build an app in a very standard Rails-like way, even though it uses these kind of complex structured metadata that ends up getting stored as JSON in Postgres. Um, so it hasn't gotten a lot of uptake, but the University of Minnesota is also using it for a GeoPortal project. This is a presentation they gave on that project last June. That's about Kaith. And they did all of that without, uh, I didn't know they'd done it until after they'd done it. They just used the documentation, which I think it was a success of having an easy to use project and a good documentation. But um, I'm also always happy to talk to people if you're interested in Kite. I'd be really excited if other people are interested in checking it out and seeing if it's um, for their project. Um, so yeah, that's my presentation. Thanks for listening. <laughs>